In the silent, freezing expanse of the upper atmosphere, a fifth-generation fighter jet streaks across the sky, a marvel of modern engineering. Yet the supply chain for this indispensable material is alarmingly fragile. A hidden dependency has quietly grown, tethering the West's most advanced defense and aerospace industries to a single, powerful source, China. This isn't just about economics, it's a matter of national security, a silent chokehold that could be tightened at any moment. The story of titanium is a story of power. Today, as geopolitical tensions simmer, the world is waking up to a stark reality. The very platforms that project Western military power rely on a supply chain that begins in the minds and foundries of a strategic rival. What happens if Beijing decides to restrict exports? The consequences would ripple through global defense manufacturing. This is not a hypothetical scenario. Understanding this looming crisis requires us to look beyond the headlines and delve into the intricate web of global trade, industrial policy, and geopolitical strategy. The world's defense industry is at a crossroads, and the path it chooses next will determine its resilience for decades to come. Titanium was first discovered in the late 18th century, but it remained a laboratory curiosity for over 150 years. Its potential was locked away due to the immense difficulty and cost of extracting it from its ore. It wasn't until the 1950s during the height of the Cold War that the United States pioneered a process to produce the metal on an industrial scale. The Soviet Union quickly recognized titanium's strategic value. They invested heavily in its production, leading to the creation of advanced aircraft like the MiG-25 Foxbat. Submarines, too, benefited. Titanium hulls allowed Soviet submarines to dive deeper and move faster than their American counterparts. Beyond military applications, titanium found its way into countless other industries. However, its primary role has always remained linked to national power and technological leadership. No one could have predicted the seismic shift that was about to occur, a shift that would see China methodically and relentlessly climb the value chain to become the world's undisputed leader in titanium production. China's journey to the top of the titanium industry was not an accident, it was the result of a deliberate long-term state-led strategy. Beginning in the early 2000s, Beijing identified titanium as a strategic material essential for its own military modernization and economic development. The government initiated a multi-pronged approach, pouring massive state subsidies into domestic producers. A key part of this strategy involved securing the raw materials. China happens to have the world's largest reserves of ilmenite, the primary ore from which titanium is extracted. By controlling the beginning of the supply chain, China established a foundational advantage. Chinese state-owned enterprises began acquiring mining assets and forging partnerships in other titanium-rich countries. As China's production of low-cost titanium sponge flooded the global market, producers in other countries found it increasingly difficult to compete. By the late 2010s, the transformation was complete. The world had watched it happen, often lured by the short-term economic benefits, without fully grasping the long-term strategic consequences. As of today, in late 2025, the global titanium market is a reflection of China's dominance. China produces more titanium sponge than the rest of the world combined. This overwhelming production capacity gives Beijing significant influence over global pricing. Recent events have highlighted the fragility of this situation. In the past year, Beijing has signaled potential changes to its export policies. These announcements, even without firm action, have created market uncertainty and price volatility. Industry experts have noted a strategic ambiguity in China's approach. This market pressure has real-world consequences. Major defense contractors in the United States and Europe are now facing difficult choices. The dependency is not just on the raw sponge, but also on semi-finished products. The market is no longer just about raw materials. It's about a comprehensive industrial ecosystem that China now largely controls. The global titanium supply chain is honestly a pretty complex web. And right at its center sits China. The journey of a titanium component in a modern jet fighter often starts at a mine, maybe in China's Sichuan province or even in a Chinese-owned facility all the way in Mozambique. From there, the raw ore is shipped to these massive processing plants within China. This sponge, which is really the primary form of the metal, becomes a global commodity. Once the sponge arrives in a Western country, it's melted down and alloyed with other elements. Now, this is where the West still holds a bit of a technological edge. But, here's the catch. 
this expertise is downstream in the supply chain. The dependency is pretty clear. The West provides the advanced recipe, but China is increasingly in control of the essential ingredients. This creates a series of choke points that are, frankly, vulnerable to disruption. The web of dependency was woven over decades of prioritizing cost efficiency over supply chain security. In the high-stakes game of international relations, control over critical resources is a powerful lever of influence. China's dominance in the titanium market provides it with a formidable, yet subtle, geopolitical weapon. By threatening to restrict or cut off the supply of titanium, Beijing could attempt to influence the foreign policy decisions of other nations. This form of economic statecraft is a hallmark of modern great power competition. Experts warn that titanium could be next. The security risks extend beyond mere supply disruptions. A deep reliance on a strategic adversary for a critical defense material creates vulnerabilities to espionage and sabotage. Furthermore, the outflow of capital to purchase Chinese titanium indirectly funds the very military-industrial complex that the West views as its primary pacing challenge. The economic consequences are just as severe. A sudden restriction on titanium exports would cause chaos in the market. The dependency on Chinese titanium is not just a military problem, it is a systemic economic vulnerability. Across the globe, a chorus of voices from industry, government and academia is sounding the alarm about the strategic risks of titanium dependency. General Charles Q. Brown Jr., Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has repeatedly emphasized the importance of resilient supply chains for military readiness. Industry leaders are echoing these concerns, translating the strategic risk into tangible business realities. The CEO of a major U.S. specialty metals company testified before Congress earlier this year. His testimony highlights the core issue. The fight for market share was lost on an uneven playing field. Think tanks and policy institutes are providing the data to back up these warnings. The dependency is systemic, the report's lead author explained in an interview. Even within the financial community, analysts who once praised the cost efficiencies of globalized supply chains are now cautioning about the hidden risks. The era of just-in-time is giving way to an era of just-in-case. Companies with diversified and secure titanium supply chains will have a significant competitive advantage in the coming decade. The consensus is clear and growing. The quiet dependency on Chinese titanium has become a loud and present danger. Faced with this stark reality, Western nations and their allies are beginning to take concrete steps to reduce their dependency on Chinese titanium. The strategy is twofold, diversify sources of supply and reinvest in domestic production. Diversification involves strengthening relationships with other titanium producing nations, such as Japan and Kazakhstan. Another promising avenue for diversification is exploring new sources. Countries like India, Vietnam, and Australia have significant titanium ore reserves. This is a long-term play, as it takes years to develop a mine and build a processing plant. The second, and perhaps more critical, part of the strategy is reshoring, bringing titanium production back home. In the United States, the Department of Defense has started using the Defense Production Act to provide grants and incentives. Furthermore, innovation is seen as a key part of the solution. Researchers are working on new, more efficient, and less costly methods of producing titanium. Developing a robust circular economy for titanium would reduce the need for primary metal. The story of titanium is a powerful lesson in the geopolitics of the 21st century. China's strategic and patient rise to dominance in the titanium market has exposed this weakness. The solution requires a deliberate and sustained call to action from governments, working in close partnership with industry. It demands a fundamental shift in thinking, moving from a just-in-time mentality to a just-in-case strategy. The path forward is clear, though challenging. First, governments must make a firm, long-term commitment to rebuilding their domestic titanium production capacity. Second, they must forge stronger alliances with other democratic nations. Third, they must double down on innovation, funding research into new production methods. These actions will require political will and significant financial investment. The silent grip that China holds on the world's titanium supply is a threat that can no longer be ignored. Securing the titanium supply chain is not just about protecting an industry, it is about safeguarding our future.